This is Changing Channels with Larry Walsh, the channelnomics podcast that connects you with channel chiefs, thought leaders, and executives about what it takes to get the next generation of tech to market. Here's your host, Larry Walsh, the CEO and Chief Analyst of Channelnomics. Hello, everyone. I'm Larry Walsh, and welcome to Changing Channels. It's uh, It's been a while since we've been together. Over the summer, Changing Channels moved into our new studios, still without a live studio audience. Uh, Channelnomics took a break from our busy production schedule, and uh, oh, by the way, uh, we launched a new magazine, Channelnomics Quarterly. Uh, in the latest issue, CQ explores the challenges that channel leaders will face in these uncertain and unstable economic times, um, how master agents or technology services brokers are stealing the channel spotlight and insights into non-standard pricing. Uh, so this is real exciting stuff. So be sure to subscribe by checking out you know, the links below. Uh, so you know, now on to the subject at hand. Networking is one of the foundational segments of the technology industry and the channel, of course. Uh, when you point to any random reseller or solution provider, chances are they sell or support boxes to get packets from point A to point B, either over wires or wireless. Um, managed service providers make good livings monitoring and managing uh, switches and routers on behalf of their clients. And each year, businesses spend billions of dollars on networking gear and billions upon billions more in operations and support. The networking segment is well-defined and mature. Uh, there's Cisco, um, the market leader, of course, Extreme Networks, Arista, HP, Aruba, and a spattering of others. It doesn't take much to see that there's not a lot of movement in networking, and there's also perceivably not a lot of white space. Anyone saying differently, uh, the incumbents would say, is living in denial. And that's where we start. Earlier this month, a new networking company launched, Nile, uh, it's called, and which promises to revolutionize the boring and staid networking segment with a complete as-a-service model in which customers pay as they go and partners generate recurring cash flow. The company was founded by John Chambers, the former CEO and chairman of Cisco Systems, and in Panke Patel, the former executive vice president and chief development officer at Cisco. I mean, this is really a powerful pair. And Nile is starting out on strong footing. It has about $125 million in funding and the backing of more than 50 partners, including Presidio, Pomeroy, and CBTS. Um, joining us today is Lou Soringa, Nile's Chief Revenue Officer, to talk about the company's Nile Connect Partner Program and the disruptive opportunities in as-a-service networking. So with that, Lou, welcome to uh, Changing Channels. Larry, thank you so much. I'm excited to be here. Congrats on the launch of the magazine, and I'm looking forward to the uh, conversation. Oh, excellent. So look, let's start by just introducing more formally. I, I talked a little bit about Nile in the intro, but tell us a little bit about Nile. You know, it, it's unusual to hear about a networking company launching uh, in a time when it seemed like this part of the market was pretty sewn up. So what is Nile and what is it aiming towards? What's its, uh, its, its proposition? Yeah, and I think that you really um, summarized it well. Networking has not changed since Ethernet became the de facto standard, which, you know, you can pick the year 1997, 1998, when people started to move away from uh, standards like Token Ring and FIDI and ATM as a potential land transport model. And um, there has been no real innovation. And what we're really focused on is basically doing what Amazon did for compute for networking. And we're really focused on creating a completely new category that is built around consumption. And if you just talk to anyone, we all know networks are too complex. They're too costly. They are inherently insecure. So to secure them, it takes lots of tools and lots of money and lots of operational excellence. And networks are not cloud. And we're really looking to resolve those issues for customers. And you're starting out, you know, you're starting out as a, a channel centric company. I mean, you have a, a pretty strong roster of, of not just good partners. I mean, these are, these are large enterprise focused partners. Uh, is Nile actually using the channel as a, the launch pad for it's for entering into the market or is it a hybrid model where you have direct and indirect? What's the, what's the sales philosophy? Yeah, um, Larry, so we're uh, a channel-first company. When uh, I sat down with John and Pankaj and we talked about, you know, really building velocity in our go-to-market, 
we all unanimously agreed that it had to be a channel first model. So we were completely focused on the channel. Um, the channel partners we're talking to, you know, they're big, they're smart. They believe there's a huge market out there for network as a service. And they believe we're differentiated and innovated and we're on the cusp of a wave. So as you mentioned, we've got some of the best and brightest partners um, joining the Nile Connect program. Uh, which I think is a testament to the potential market opportunity out there for a true consumption-based network as a service platform. Well, this isn't uh, network as a service isn't necessarily a new concept. Um, there are other companies that have offered either wireless services or wireless managed services or network, and a lot of MSPs, for that matter do network managed services where they're managing the devices on the customer site. What's the value proposition that you're bringing to the partners that are attracting them into the Nile Connect program? Yeah, and now this is a lot different than your traditional managed service solution that would be delivered by um, anyone. Because what we basically um, developed is a framework that is built around technology, cloud, and operations that is solely focused on simplicity. And we have the ability to go out and work with partners at, in conjunction with our partners and talk to a customer about delivering network as a service in a true pay for what you utilize fashion with, with guaranteed service level agreements that are built around performance, capacity, and coverage. No one in the marketplace today can go into a, to a customer and say, hey, we are going to charge you for what you actually utilize and we're gonna back it with actual performance guarantees. Most managed services today are basically taking a bulk of hardware, a bulk of software, wrapping it into a financial model, a lease, and coming back to a customer and saying, hey, would you like to consume this as an operating expense? And we'll mask all the complexity that's behind that software and op uh, hardware operating stack uh, with some people up in a knock or a sock somewhere. That's completely the opposite of what we're doing. Um, so we think this is very, very differentiated. And I think I'm talking to custom, uh, partners and customers every day, and we're getting the same feedback from them uh, because it truly is built around that utilization. It's built around simplicity, zero trust security out of the box, and then allowing outcomes that are guaranteed. And uh, as you know, an MSP or a traditional NAS model, the the real service levels are around, hey, we'll get back to you in four hours, or we'll guarantee we'll get back to you in one hour and try to tell you what the problem is. And that's the opposite of delivering great outcomes. We're focused on those, those performance level guarantees, and we think that's really resonating with uh, customers, and we're hearing the same thing from our partners. Yeah, so you're delivering the service. The partner is facilitating the, the account. What's the, what's the, because if you're the one guaranteeing the, the SLA performance, the service level agreement for, uh, level performance, what's the role of the partner? Where does the partner bring the value add in the now go to market equation? Because with the incumbents, it's fairly simple. They're the ones that are delivering boxes and turning wrenches. What is it that they're doing with the customer on Niles behalf? Yeah, it's a great question as well. Um, so everything that we're doing is built around working with partners. So we have really three uh, tracks that partners can uh, assist us with. You know, obviously partners have trusted relationships with customers and we view those relationships as privileged. So we're going to take really great care of our partners and our customers when we go to market together. The second thing that we need uh, as it relates to is um, great um uh, access to resources. So a part of our solution is to provide a turnkey delivery to uh, customers. And we really need partners to help us to facilitate that. So what we allow the partner to do is work with us in the actual uh, go-to-market effort around sales. We actually allow the partner to participate with us in the deployment services and to realize the benefit of um, the expertise around deployment. And then lastly, we can very, very easily bolt into a partner's managed service solution. And the real value there is we're not looking for the partner to make that really tough call to go out and say, hey, am I going to finance this hardware and software? Am I going to put it on my books? Am I not going to put it on my books? 
that all goes away. And I've been talking to a lot of partners, and I don't know if you had, um, but I saw your um, article around rising interest rates. Partners are really strapped right now, right? Because they have a bunch of um, receivables on their uh, balance sheets, but they can't ship any product. Mm. That challenge goes completely away in the Nile model, which is a huge benefit for partners, big or small. And that's why you see um, world-class partners like Presidio and CBTS saying, hey, this is the future. And I think it really is a new category. And I uh, completely agree with you around networking being somewhat boring, but we're not doing networking. We're creating a completely different category. It's all built around consumption, delivering outcomes, getting what you pay for and guaranteeing what you realize. And, and I think that's foundationally different than what any other networking vendor can uh, deliver today. Yeah. Do you uh, first is that w what you were referencing there is that I just released a short video about the, the interest rate hikes and the impact it's going to have on the channel. If anybody's interested in it, there's a link for it below and it's on YouTube um, because you're right. Is there's from my perspective and it's the perspective of channelnomics is that there is a recession that's either here or coming. There is a going to be a cash crunch in, in the not too distant future. That's the entire point of the fed raising the interest rates. Do you believe that that the as a service model, the consumption based model that you're bringing to market at this time, is that part of the antidote to the cash crunch when it comes to maintaining a solid performing uh, network for digital digitally dependent enterprises? The digital transformation is a huge, huge opportunity for us, right? Every company out there at the board level is figuring out how to transition their um, their environment to digital. And what um, customers really need today is outcomes. They don't need to have all of their um, focus and all of their costs associated with operating the plumbing. Let us come in and deliver a utility in the way that you would consume electricity. And let us take all of that complexity out of your environment and let us allow you to realize the outcomes that are critical to your constituents and we'll charge you for what you actually utilize, right? And what that gives um, organizations is the ability to uplift their entire IT staff. Because most IT staffs we're talking to are awesome, but they're doing a ton with a little. They're being asked to do more by the business and they're not getting um, you know, additional resources to do that. So what we can do is completely uh, liberate those resources and allow them to go concentrate on stuff that actually makes a difference for the business. And I think that's a big part of what we're doing. And the way that we're doing it from the ground up, Larry, is foundationally different. I, I'm not talking about the technology, but the technology stack, the cloud stack, and the operational stack that we're building is completely automated. So we're building this all from the ground up. And the only people that could build something like this are John Chambers and Pankaj Patel, the guys who actually created networking from the beginning, because they've taken everything that they've learned over the past 25 years and said, hey, how do we extract out all of that complexity that's been built in, that technology debt that's been built in over 25 years? So we're not even talking about the technology, but the foundational differentiation is in the tech, the operations, and the cloud. That's it's pretty spectacular. You know what you're describing. I mean, the, the entire the comparison to electricity and the way that we consume electricity and build electrical infrastructure, at least the way we build it in, in the buildings, is that yeah, we buy equipment or the outlets and the wiring, but we never think about them after that why, and, why? unless they break. You would think after 30 years of doing networking, someone would extract the complexity, the cost out of networking and actually deliver it as a utility. That's yeah. the category we're creating. Yeah. That's you the know, and the category we're creating. And if you think that a traditional vendor can do that with all of the tech debt that they have, I think that's a really, really tall task for them. It had to be built from the ground up. And that's why I'm so excited about being at Nile. Yeah.
Yeah. And for those who, you know, are curious, there's a, it's actually an old book at this point. It came out, it came out about 2007, 2008 called the big switch by Nick Carr, who actually makes this analogy of the transition, you know, comparing the development of electricity to the development of the internet. So it's a great analogy to talk about electricity this way. Let's come back to now connect because it's a brand new channel program. Um, and it's good to see a channel program come, you know, launch, from scratch with so many partners and not only partners, but marquee partners, yeah. um, but it's a little different than most. It's, you know, you describe it as tearless. Can you talk a little bit about what that is and, and why you decided to go that route? Yeah. I mean, I, I've been in this business for a long time, just like you have. And one of the things that really um, I consistently heard from principals of partners was, you know, it's just such a big lift to have all of these different requirements that, um, vendors constantly put on their shoulders, right? And it's like, hey, if you want to make this much profit, you got to go do this certification. And if you want to make a little bit more profit, you got to go get this certification. And even though you're not in this business over here, you know, to make even more profit, you got to do those certifications. So in the context of um, the way that, you know, Pankaj and, um, and you know, the, the founders approach the, um, development of the technology, the operations, the cloud platform around simplicity. We we're like, let's just take that same approach, you know, with with the partner program. Let's really try to make this something that partners can latch onto very, very quickly. So the partner program is really focused on um, first and foremost, you know, tierlessness. There's that there are no tiers, right? We know that you know um, partners want protection. That's for sure. So we built deal registration and that's absolutely a part of it. But tiers are, in my opinion, a unnecessary evil. So we basically said, hey, let's go out and make sure that partners can be profitable from the very beginning. If they are, you know, generous enough to give us access to their privileged, you know, customers that have credibility with them, we're going to basically make them really, really profitable. The second thing that we want to do is take advantage of a huge market opportunity. I don't think you can go out and talk to a CIO today. And if you said to them, Hey, if you could consume network as a service and we could get rid of a lot of the headaches that you have in your environment and deliver better outcomes, they wouldn't say, Hey, I'm interested. So there's a really big market opportunity. And then the third thing is just the cash flow. The way that we're building this is truly as a service. So we're not asking for the partner to buy the equipment up front. We're not asking for the customer to buy the equipment up front. We're delivering a service. The service is built around guaranteed SLAs and the customer pays for what they utilize. And the partners enjoy with us, you know, hopefully delighting a customer and the benefits of uh, that revenue stream. And we've done a really good job of protecting partners up front and then protecting them on the back end. And it's our job as, you know, partners in business to create win-win wins for our, our customers. And if they retain that business, we actually treat the renewal, Larry, as a brand new uh, contract. And we, we give them the same profitability that they realized when they brought the business to us uh, at the beginning. So in general, in general, and I'm talking to partners a lot, and I was in the field with partner uh, reps this week. They're, they like the program. They like the profitability. They love the concept of extracting complexity out of networking, and they like um, and they like the overall solution. So I think we've got a real good shot at building long-term um uh, growth partnerships with some of the best in the business, which, you know, we have already signed up. Yeah. Well, you know, it's, I, I appreciate the, the aiming for simplicity, you know, and as, you know, Steve Jobs famously said, you know, simple is hard. Uh, yeah, right. It is. It's a lot. Really, yeah. I mean, a lot. I can't remember which writer said it is like, you know, if I, if I had more time, I would have been shorter. Um, it, it, but it's difficult. And one of the things, as you said, it is that, you know, about certifications and the time and investment it takes for partners to get certified within these various, uh, various programs and you don't have certifications. So how are you, how are you upskilling and enabling your partners and, you know, still giving them some level of competency or some proof that they, they can take out to their customers and say, Hey, we're good with this. Yeah, the, you know, we have a three-pronged approach to our enablement strategy. I mean, it's a lot of work. You know, the first thing we're trying to do is talk about the market opportunity and talk about, you know, a differentiated offering, right? And that and that resonates. 
And then from there, you know, the hard work really starts and we've got to go out and enable our partners. And the way that we're approaching that is a three-pronged approach. We enable partners uh, around sales uh, competency. Um, and that includes a really, really nice ROI framework that we think really can um, uh, resonate with customers. The second is we want to take their field engineers or their technical engineers or solution architects, whatever the nomenclature they have for them. And we have a separate track of enablement for them. And then the last component, which is uh, something I referenced uh, earlier, is uh, the ability to enable them to be a delivery partner. And, you know, that's a really um, broad framework. Uh, we have uh, both on site, um, uh, virtual and um, web deliver content to do those things. And it's a work in progress. You know, we're working really hard at it, but the overall uh, progress is really, um, I think, good. And we will iteratively continue to make it better. Um, but that's that's where the real hard work is, Larry, and it's getting partners to get on board, enable them, and then getting them to revenue. And the yeah. faster that we can do that, um, the faster we're going to take off, and you're going to watch us grow. Um, but when we sign, you know, 50 partners out of the gate, it should tell you that there's a market opportunity for this. And it should tell you that when they peel back the onion and partners have gates, just like customers do to assess technology, that when they peel back the onion and they look at the technology stack, they're like, Hey, this is, this is something really different. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, the technology sounds different. Um, I mean, look, I'm not to diminish to do whatever innovations you're bringing to the table, but we're really talking about pushing packets still. Um, it, sure. it sounds, it's, it, look, it sounds interesting from a model too, because you're right, consumption does bring the promise of giving more flexibility to the customer. But flexibility, at least in the way you're describing it, can often be a double-edged sword. It also can mean instability and in the predictability of recurring revenue. So how does this actually work for the partner? How does the partner make money or how do you give the partner the predictability that they often look for? Because the current models that they're operating with, with again, we'll just call them the incumbents. Um, that's pretty easy to understand. It is right? easy to understand. Yeah, you, know, you buy a box, you mark it up and out it goes. Yeah. And, and this is, this is a, this is a different model. And I think a better model in um, what you talked about, which is, consistency in revenue and predictability. Um, one of the challenges when you do what you talked about, which is, hey, you take a stack of technology, mark it up and sell it. Um, to grow, you have to go and do that the following year and you have to do more. And you can appreciate that. And that's why the um, vision of you know reoccurring revenue is so attractive to um, technology companies. We're basically allowing partners to participate in reoccurring revenue, monthly reoccurring revenue, guaranteeing them profitability from that reoccurring revenue, and they can build that out in perpetuity. As long as we make the customer happy, we deliver value, and we delight the customer. And right. that is such a great thing for partners because – Partners have that desire today. I, I, I've been with, you know, networking companies, world-class networking companies, and we go in and talk to partners about standing up and managed service. But the cost benefit of doing that, it's a huge uplift. We completely eliminate that for them. Yeah. And that's, that, that is like um, wildly exciting for principles of uh, partners, big and small. So I think it's potentially much more beneficial than, you know, what they already know. And trust me, we're creating a new category. So I have to talk to them about that and we have to model this out. And once we model it out, most of them are like, you know, the first, you know, short term, it's, it's interesting, but long term, it's really, really, really interesting. Right. And success creates it becoming more interesting. So I, I think we've onto something with regard to the model I'm talking about, which is basically a reoccurring model where they share in the profit every month or quarter or year that the customer actually stays with us uh, and them. And um, it can really differentiate their business for the long haul. Yeah. 
Yeah. One of the things that you talk about, uh, I mean, you, Niall, talks about is the market opportunity, $25 billion a year in spending on network products, networking products, about $75 billion on top of that spent on operations around those products. Mm -hmm. How much of this opportunity is going to be share shift versus incremental? How much of this is, are, is there a risk of cannibalization before you get to incremental growth? Um, yeah, that's a great question. And it's a really big macro level question, but ultimately what I think, um, my perspective is, you know, and I talk to really, um, smart CEOs and owners of partners and, and partners really are focused on delivering value. And I think that when we talk about that, very, very big TAM. When we talk about 25 billion in software and hardware, but then we talk about 75 billion in the uh, additional yeah, ecosystem of services and operations and technical stack that goes with that. Um, I think that partners are really, really smart and the points that we're making around simplicity and the ability to extract all of the complexity that they know as well as the customer knows that's associated with today's networks. It's like they, they get it even more than the customer gets it, believe it or not, because mm -hmm. they're the ones that are going out and building the configurations, building all the software, getting all of the certs, doing all of the gyrations that's needed to build a network. And all of that stuff is eliminated when you when you choose the Nile service. And that is a really, um, I think, fascinating thing for partners because they're like, you're so right. I mean, why do we have, you know, a network design that could come from five of our engineers who are building around the same OEM, whatever OEM you want, and every one of the designs is different. Yeah. Think about that. Yeah. There's no synergy there, Larry. We there's no synergy for the partner. There's no synergy for the customer. Every single customer network is a snowflake, even if they have the exact same product as the customer next to them, because of the way that it's been configured, because of the way that it's been um, implemented. There's no. We've automated everything. Yeah. All of the artificial intelligence that people are talking about that's in everything else we've built into the network because we've eliminated configurations completely. We've simplified the stack. We don't have 27 different options that the same network engineer can pick from, from the same OEM. We're changing everything. It's a brand new category. Well, speaking of a new category, it's not just a new category, it's a new business. And you're coming out of the gate just now where do you think you're going to be in five years? What's the what's the long term aspirations for Nile? Well, I mean, you know, I, I think that when you talk to John and Pankaj, they want to build, you know, the next great technology, a stalwart in the industry. You know, mm -hmm. much like a a um, an HP was to Silicon Valley, you know, thirty years ago, or an Amazon is to. Uh, the Pacific Northwest. And, you know, the reason we chose Nile is it's actually longer than the Amazon. Just a, you know, little tidbit. Okay. Um, but I think what we really want to do is build a category, right? And and, that, and that's something that's very, very interesting and unique. We want to build a great company that has a great culture um, that delights customers. And we want to build um, a long-term sustainable technology company. I mean, that's really what the focus is. Um, yeah. So we, we've got a lot of work to do. We're just in our infancy, um, but, you know, we're, we're making progress every day. We have customers, they're happy. We have partners that are getting to revenue and, you know, we think we have a differentiated uh, go to market. Fantastic. Well, Lou, I really, uh, really appreciate you coming and joining us here on Changing Channels. We wish you and the Nile team the best of luck in your endeavors. Yeah. Everyone, you know, Lou Slowinga, the Chief Revenue Officer at Nile. Thanks again for being here. And I want to thank all of you for joining us again here on Changing Channels. Uh, technology continues to reshape the world and the go-to-market models. And we're tracking it here at Channelnomics and bringing you the latest insights through Changing Channels. If you like what we're doing here, hit the like button, tell a friend, and subscribe to the latest updates. Until next time, I'm Larry Walsh.
Thank you for joining Changing Channels with Larry Walsh, a production of Channelnomics, with the support of our production team at Modern Podcasting. If you've enjoyed today's episode, hit the like button, subscribe wherever you get your podcasts, and share with your friends. For more information about Channelnomics services and insights, follow us on Twitter and YouTube, and check out our website at channelnomics.com. Channelnomics is a registered trademark of and Changing Channels is copyright by 2112 Enterprises, LLC.